Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be doing some Linux related content. Yeah, we're going to be diving into Linux today and we're going to be taking a look at a very cool, very unique, essentially a transformation pack for the XFCE desktop environment called Chicago 95, which if you can't already tell by the image we've got on screen right now, it makes your system look like Windows 95 and it does a very, very good job at doing that. Now, this project is nothing new. I just found out about it recently myself. The first version of Chicago 95 was released back in October of 2019, but the second version, which is what we're going to be taking a look at today, was released last year. Now, I got to give a huge thank you to Dominic, aka the Farron OS dev, for letting me know about this, and also for creating a very useful tool to use with Chicago 95 called Chicago Fire. Now, before I explain what this does, I have to talk a little bit about how Chicago 95 installs, because there are a couple different ways you can choose to install Chicago 95. With version 2.0, there is an automated Python based installer that uh, really mimics the Windows 95 setup process. But if you go that route, that will only apply the Chicago 95 theme to your user account. It will not take effect system wide. There's also a manual install that is heavily reliant on the command line. And then you've got the system wide manual install, which is also reliant on the command line. And you know, it's not like the most difficult thing in the world to do. But for somebody who's not familiar with the command line, it could be rather daunting. So that's where Chicago Fire comes in. What Dominic has done is created this script that essentially automates the entire process. And we're going to be going this route today. And you don't even have to download Chicago 95 from its GitHub page because the script will download it for you. So we're going to go to the Chicago Fire GitHub page. I'll have both of these down below, by the way, if you prefer to go with the manual method or if you just want to install it uh, for your user session, uh, you can just go with the automated install, though you do have to install Python. If you don't already have it installed, and if you don't, Chicago Fire will do that for you. So we're going to go ahead and download it here. We'll download the source code in a zip file. We are, by the way, using Zubuntu 2104, if you were curious or if you couldn't already tell. So we're going to extract this uh, to the desktop here and we'll close out of this and the browser. And all we have to do is open up Chicago Fire and we're going to open up a terminal window and type in the command bash space period slash Chicago Fire dot sh press enter and here we go so it says welcome to Chicago Fire an unofficial script to do the transformation of XFCE into the Chicago 95 look before we begin huge shout outs to Grass Monk who by the way is the developer of Chicago 95 and everyone else who has contributed to Chicago 95 without all of you this wouldn't be possible to do so it's going to uh, tell us to press enter and a pseudo password prompt will follow so you have to enter in your user password and you can also if you're curious you can uh, open up the script itself and read through it if you want to see exactly what it does uh, so we'll just close out of that for now but yeah right now it is downloading the required packages and once it does that it will download the chicago 95 package itself i also like how it says grabbing theme go burr uh, it's got that uh, a couple times throughout here now this part of the script right here is very useful and it's also unique to chicago fire what this allows you to do is replace mozilla firefox with epiphany also known as gnome web and the reason you would want to do this is because mozilla firefox it's not like it's not going to work or anything, but the theme will not change the look and feel of Mozilla Firefox. However, the theme will take effect on Epiphany, or again, Gnome Web, that is the current name of the browser. But yes, the Chicago 95 theme will take effect on Epiphany, which is very useful if you're really going for a system-wide Windows 95 look. So we're going to say, yes, we want to install Epiphany, and uh, we'll press enter, and now it's going to go download uh, some more packages that it needs. And right here is where it launches the Chicago 95 Python script. So, and as I said earlier, this really looks like the Windows 95 setup process. They've even got the background here. This allows you to just go through, select the components that you want. So we're gonna get everything here and uh, we'll just go with all of the default options for the customizations screen right here. We click on install and this is where the bulk of the theme is, is gonna be applied. So you can see that the design of the windows and the taskbar and the applications menu button have already changed and they are just 
just to modify the icons. And there it says installation completed. So we're going to click on finish. And now the terminal window says, welcome to Chicago 95. The system will restart. So it does a quick restart here. And once we boot back up here, the first thing you're going to notice is the new design of the logon screen. And there we go. So yeah, we really got that Windows 9X kind of design language going on. So we'll type in our password and we'll log in and you will hear the Windows 95 startup sound. And here we are logged back in. Now you probably noticed when the Python script finished, it opened up that text document. Now that's here on the desktop because we're not completely done with the installation process yet. Even with the Chicago Fire automated script, there are a couple of things we have to do manually after the installation finishes. One of the things we have to change is the applications menu button because you can see it has not been changed. But check out the applications menu itself. It looks really good and it really combines the Windows 95 design with the functionality of the applications menu. All that functionality is still here. You can still search for things. You can still, uh, you know, go to your different categories here and get them showing up on the right side and check out all the icons. A lot of the default program icons have been changed to uh, an icon that fits in with Windows 95, even for some third party programs like LibreOffice, which we will touch on in a moment. So for now, though, we're going to close out of it and we essentially just want to follow along with this text document document here. So the first thing we're going to do is enable the notification theme. So right now, if I were to try and change the volume, for example, we do have the volume icon from Windows 95, but the design of the notification itself hasn't been changed. It kind of looks out of place, right? So what we're going to do is open up the applications menu and we're going to search for settings and you want to open up the settings manager here, which by the way, has also been redesigned. You got new icons all across the board. We're interested in going to notifications right here and you want to go down here to theme and change this to Chicago 95 and you see you get a preview up here we're also going to change the opacity to 100% and now when we click on show preview here's what it looks like so we can close out of this and just to show you now if I uh, change the volume you can see that is what it looks like next thing we want to do is go back into the settings manager we could have just left it open and uh, now you want to go to panel right here and this will allow you to change the design of the button itself of the uh, applications menu button so uh, we're going to uh, just follow along with what it says so we got to go to the items tab then you want to double click on whisker menu which is the name of this menu itself here and you want to go to panel button now you can change the as I have here I've changed the title of it to start menu so you can do that if you want to but the main thing you want to do is click on the icon right here and this will bring up this icon chooser but what we want to do is go to the drop down menu up here and change this to image files and that'll bring up a file browser here now you can go to your home folder right here now we have to show hidden files by right clicking and checking well show hidden files and from here we want to go into dot themes Chicago 95 you want to go to miscellaneous now they've got different options here depending on what GTK version you have for me personally I found that the legacy GTK 3 start buttons work the best and in here you've got tux.png windows.png and xue.png so we're going to select windows.png we'll just double click on that and now check it out we've got the Windows 95 star button, or at least a very close recreation of it. And when you hover over the button, that's when the title comes up. So right now it says start menu. I can actually change this to click here to begin. So we'll do that here. Click here to begin. There you go. So that looks uh, a lot more Windows 95-esque. So yeah, that's the modifications you have to make to the whisker menu. And that completes the post installation procedure. So it was really just those two things, changing the notification theme, which is again, this right here, and changing the start button. So we can close out of this. So there you go. Congratulations, you have successfully installed Chicago 95 system wide. But before we end off this video, I do want to touch on a couple of the applications that uh, this theme modifies the look and feel of. So we're going to start off with the web browser now as I said before Firefox got uninstalled uh, because we selected yes when it asked us if we wanted to install epiphany so we're going to just search for web here and uh, we do have web and web browser so web browser here so you've got the uh, DB sensible browser and the epiphany web browser which has the IE icon right here so we're gonna select that and click on OK and that setting modifies the favorites listing right here so this web browser listing will now open up 
the uh, GNOME web or the Epiphany web browser. And here's how it looks. So yeah, very, very basic looking. Honestly reminds me of an early version of Internet Explorer, which is what they're going for here. And you can still open up new tabs by clicking right here. So now we've opened up a new tab. Uh, though you can see they don't really have like a divider or anything like that, that, you know, something really pronounced that lets you know that these are two separate buttons. Uh, so we can open up all these tabs here and it doesn't really look like, you know, there's not like a divider in between them. And uh, this right here reloads. I mean, obviously, like I said, the browser is going to function exactly like the browser normally does. But uh, even like the uh, the settings menu here, you can see has kind of a Microsoft Bob speech bubble look to it, which I think looks looks pretty neat. So we can go to preferences here. Here's what the preferences menu looks like. Uh, and yeah, so that is the Epiphany or the GNOME web browser. So we'll close out of that. Next up, let's take a look at the terminal or should I say DOS prompt because well, it looks like a DOS prompt now. Pretty cool, right? So yeah, here it is. Microsoft Windows 95, the copyright info there. It even displays the current directory that we're in in a Windows-like format. So it now says the root directory is the C drive, which obviously is not the case on a Linux system here. This is just done for cosmetic purposes, but it's pretty cool. Next up, let's talk about LibreOffice, uh, which I briefly touched on before. We talked about the icons, which get changed uh, to the old Microsoft Office style icons. So you got Word here for writer you've got uh, the old excel icon for calc and yeah it just takes a, i mean the icons across the entire system are pretty much modified there are you know exceptions for certain applications but they have modified uh, most of them here or the author has a uh, modified most of them all of the icons within libreoffice itself though have remained unchanged so there's not like a new icon pack for libreoffice but obviously the design of the window and everything gets changed so yeah there you go that's how libreoffice writer looks and last but not least one of the really cool things that uh, Chicago 95 has is the ability to apply actual Windows themes from Microsoft Plus for Windows 95 and this is done through if we open up the applications menu here and search for plus there is uh, Chicago 95 plus right here so we can launch this and uh, this is going to look very very familiar to you if you've ever used Microsoft Plus yeah you have essentially what is a recreation of the Windows 95 plus theme picker and what you can do is I've got the themes folder from a Windows 95 plus installation I'm going to copy it over to the VM here and I can apply one of these themes so if I click on the folder icon up here I go to desktop I go to the new themes folder I've just copied over and let's apply my favorite theme which is inside your computer so we're going to hit on open there we go so it gives you a preview here and by the way there is this uh, command line window opened up in the background which you will have to keep open and uh, you can press OK on this dialog box here this just lets you know that when you click apply or OK you have to leave it until it's done uh, and the more you use your computer the slower the process is so it's just kind of a little uh, notification there just to let you know that so we'll press OK and just like with plus 95 you can uncheck specific components so for example if you don't want the icons or the wallpaper you can uncheck that but I want everything so let's click on OK and there we go guys the inside your computer theme has been applied and uh, it looks good as ever you got those mouse pointers you got the icons even the theme itself uh, gets changed so now it's got that that green uh, color to it which uh, which looks pretty nice and yes the wallpaper gets applied as well and staying true to that Windows 95 fashion it's in 4x3 as opposed to 16x9 there you have it guys I mean that is uh, the Chicago 95 essentially I'm gonna call it a transformation pack that's really what it is the Chicago 95 transformation pack for the XFCE desktop environment I think it is super cool it is free it is open source if you want to go check it out the links will be down below to both it and Chicago fire and uh, that's that's really all I've got for you guys today if you guys enjoyed this one be sure to give it a thumbs up be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video which I do multiple times every single week on this channel and as always i want to thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video